In today's video, you're gonna learn one of the most memory efficient ways to go through your data. Or in this case, I should say yield back data. To do this, we're gonna be using Python generators. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back guys for another episode of Code with Josh. For obvious reasons, I'm Josh, and I'm stoked to have you guys here. Before I dive into today's episode, do me a favor, hit that like button and subscribe. That really does help out my channel. So if you find this video helpful, hit the like button and drop a comment. Today, I'm gonna to share with you guys a memory efficient way we can iterate, we can go through data without storing it in lists. To do this, we're using something called Python generators. You're gonna learn about how generators work and why we use them. You're gonna learn the new keyword yield and I'm gonna rapid fire three quick code examples so you know how to use these today. The first link in the description, that's my weekly Python newsletter where I write about topics requested by you guys and other trending topics in Python. Head on down to the first link in the description and come in and join in on all the action. All right, let's start generating some generators over in VS Code. All right, Python crew. In today's video, we're gonna go over generators, when and why we use them. By the end of this video, you're gonna be using generators like it's nothing. So really up here, I wanna cover really quickly why and when we use these. Now, a generator is a data structure in a sense, but it doesn't store the values like a list, a tuple, or a dictionary. The values are only generated as we need them. And for this, we actually use the Python word yield. Now, we still have the same advantage as a list because we can iterate. I can go through a generator uh, just like a list itself. And the reason we use these is because they're so much more memory efficient. And they do something that's called lazy evaluation. So the values are only computed when we need them instead of storing them in a structure. And then once a generator runs its term, we can't reuse that unless we recreate a generator. Okay, so really we use these for much more memory efficient programming. So let's start off, I'm gonna give you guys three rapid fire examples here. Let's say we wanna get some even numbers. We'll start with an easy example and I'll build up from there. I'm gonna create a function really quickly called even numbers, let's give it n. I can say for i in range, uh, let's start at zero, we're gonna go to n plus one, and to get the even numbers, we'll do a step of two, so two, four, six. Um, I'm just gonna yield back, I wanna give back i every time the loop runs. Now outside here to use the generator, I would just then call my function, give it some type of number. This is just like a list, and so we can loop through it. For every number in my evens, right, you can still come down here and I'm just gonna print off num. Okay, when you run your code, the output is gonna look like a list, but these numbers are only being generated on the spot. So this saves us a lot of time and memory. Uh, like if this number was, let's just increase it to like, is that a 100,000, right? If I run this now, each of these numbers, it's only being generated and then it's being discarded. It's done with it, okay? Okay, let's take this up a level. Okay, so I'm gonna actually, let's just turn these off. Okay, let's say we're working with uh, large files. So in this case, I have actually already generated just a really long text file, it's just repeating. Okay, and I put a thousand lines in this file. Um, I wanna go through and I wanna read each line, but I don't wanna save the data because that's gonna take up a lot of memory to, to save that data. Okay, um, so let's create a function for this. Let's say def, let's call this read file. This is gonna take some type of file, okay? Now let's say with open, we wanna open. What do we wanna open? I wanna open the file and I wanna read it as a file, okay? And I'm gonna go for every line in my file, let's just yield back the line. Let's give it back to us, okay? Um, really, the function here is done. Uh, if you wanted a fun way to do this, you could uh, time it. So from time import time, right? Let's just actually go here. Um, I will go, I guess, from the minute I open the file, let's say start, let's time it. 
And then when this is done, let's create a new time just to kind of see this. I'll print off uh, end minus start, which will be the time that this has ran. Um, outside here, let's just give it a path. So that is my data text file. And we're gonna say for every line in my read file, that's my generator. I could call it before if we wanted to, but let's just call it like that. Um, I'm gonna print off the line. Okay, so here, right, I'm still going through my file, every line, but I'm just yielding back those lines. And I mean, if there's any white space, you could do something like strip, I suppose, run your code, and then it's gonna go through each line, anything extra, it discards it. See, and that took 0.12 seconds, it's not saving any of that data. Okay, that's really cool. Okay, in our final example here to wind things down, um, a big use case for generators is actually working with APIs, right? So our application programming interfaces. So I'm gonna say working with APIs. Now, when we have a, a, a large response from an API, typically that comes through as JSON data, loading everything the API gives you isn't very efficient. Instead, a better way to do that is we could stream data in chunks using generators. This reduces the memory usage. Um, I have a dummy API here that you guys are welcome to use too. I'm gonna import requests. And let's create a function to fetch the data from the API. This will take some kind of URL, which we'll give it. Um, when we call the function, we need to create a response so I can use requests and we can get here. I wanna get my API URL and uh, because we're streaming this uh, in chunks, I can say stream is equal to true, okay? So we have this response. This response is a large JSON file. I can say for every line again, whatever you wanna call it, it's gonna be all these API requests in our response. We can iterate through these items. So iter lines. Um, if there is a line of data, okay, so if the response gives us something, I can then yield back that line, okay? On the outside here, let me just create a URL. So you guys can use this one too. This is just for testing. Uh, we can go here to JSON placeholder. I can say type code, type the code, yep, uh, .com, and we're gonna go posts. Okay, this is just gonna give you back dummy data. Um, so for every, I guess in this case, I've been talking about chunks. For every chunk in my fetch data, we're gonna give it our URL, and we are just gonna print off the chunk of data. Um, oops, I spelled chunk, I said chunk, okay? Um, very cool, let's run this, let's see what we get, okay? And we'll examine this together and go through it again. So look at that, there we go. Um, here is all that API data, right? It's just giving us this data back. Uh, it's giving me all these Bs, I need to decode that. Let me come in here, I'm gonna say decode, uh, we can say UTF-8, run the code again. Let's see if that produces or changes our output. Yeah, there we go, okay, it's just more readable, okay? Uh, and you can see, right, the API is doing its job, it's giving me back that data, but it's only producing it one time and then it's throwing the data out. Okay, so that's really how a generator works. All right, uh, Python knows it's a generator because we're yielding back something. When you use the yield keyword, that signifies a generator, right? These are much more memory efficient and we're not saving all that data in like a list when we don't actually need to save it in the first place. I hope that sums up Python generators for you guys in this video. I really like to break this down and help you guys understand a new topic. If you got value in today's video, hit that like button, drop a comment, and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts. And I hope that you can now take what you learned from this video, go into your own projects, and use generators to yield back data without taking up too much memory. Until next week's episode, guys, I will see you then.